Hi, I hope you're doing well. I'm back again to talk about the new moon happening, and it's going to be happening at nine degrees Sagittarius. It'll be happening on either November 30th or December 1st, based on where you are in the world. And much like the full moon we had earlier in the month, this is a new moon that has a lot of logical energy. In fact, it has one more gate of logical energy than uh, the last one did. This is also very different from the earlier uh, full moon that we had in that we do not have any definition. So when I see a lot of openness in a, um, a moon cycle uh, body graph, I, I look at it as, as I mentioned uh, then, it's more open to our individual needs, our individual path, our individual um, energy. Because there isn't sort of global definition, we don't have this sort of mass of um, people who are being influenced by the energy of definition because that is more impactful than a hanging gate. So we have a lot of openness for this new moon, which kind of gives us opening for uh, potential. The one overarching theme that is is sort of threaded throughout this whole thing, as well as the logic, is don't quit. So we do have Mercury retrograde now, and so you know any major decisions are not always. Um, the type of things you want to do with Mercury retrograde. It is a time to review, to return to things that you have looked up in the past, to sort of look at your whole life. And, and as I said in the um, monthly overview for October, I do feel that with the Mercury retrograde, we are sort of doing our, our uh, end of year uh, checkup or um, uh, check back in to discover what we have done, where we've gone, you know, how would do we want to move into 2025 in a way where we feel empowered and what changes would we like to make? With the Earth in the Gate 16 line five, we're talking about talent. And this is logical talent. And in other words, it is something that you do over and over and over again to kind of improve yourself. Now, the logical talent can be anything from doing what you do as a job to playing a, a musical instrument to just basically having a talent for life because the gate 16 is considered having a talent for life and living life. Um, but ultimately, it is about improving. So in other words, if you are in, in a job, you want to always be improving. You want to always be sort of getting that next step. And if you aren't, well, sometimes you will just want to like let go and move on. Sometimes there's a feeling that maybe you're not good enough to get the next promotion because there's that that doubt within you, which we can have with the Saturn in the gate 63 line too. But what this is ultimately saying is that you may really want to feel like you want to quit, like you don't want to do something anymore. or you, and, and it's not because you sort of have um, the cycle is finished. Now, that's not what we're talking about because if a cycle is, is finished with something in your life, and you know that it's it's finished and you don't need to be in that cycle anymore because you, it's time to start a new cycle, then that is completely different than where you say, I'm frustrated because nobody is seeing what I can do. Nobody is recognizing me. Nobody is acknowledging what I can bring to the table and I'm frustrated and I'm going to quit. But having said that, you could quit and then suddenly a promotion comes up or there would be a there would have been a promotion that would have shown up in your trajectory or something different would have shown up if you had only held on because maybe you really did like the job but you just get so frustrated with not being appreciated and instead of sort of trying to change what you could within your workspace or whatever you're doing you you let go and so this is basically saying if you're letting go because of frustration that may not serve you if you're letting go because it's the end of a cycle, absolutely go with, with what feels correct for you. So it's basically just saying, don't quit just yet. And as I said, with Mercury retrograde, you know, the decisions you make, you want to just make sure that you're not making life changing decisions. Mercury will be direct again in the middle of December. So it is, um, it's not that long. I mean, in the big scheme of our lives, two weeks is not that big of a deal. But having said that, it is your choice. It's always your choice to do whatever feels correct for you. But this is just what the energy is saying. Another theme that's playing out within this uh, new moon is that we do have a fair bit of uh, fifth line energy. Fifth line energy will always bring some level of projection. What you see may not necessarily be the truth. And that's something to keep in mind. And to the theme of quitting, if you look at the sun and the moon, they're in the gate nine line five. This is called faith, which sounds like something that is more abstract than logical. The faith here comes with the idea that the more work you put into something, the more chance it will work out. So if it's not working out when you put this amount of work in, 
maybe it'll work if you put this, you know, incre increasing amounts of something into something. Now, what this is saying is that it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes it is just a moment of divine timing that opens up the door, that changes the path, that changes something. And you could have put hours, more hours and more hours and more hours into something and become, like I said, frustrated and want to quit because you've put all this energy into something and it's just not playing out the way you want it to. And then you let go and quit as opposed to just saying, okay, I've done what I can at this point. Now I'm just going to let go and just let life happen. Let something show up in my trajectory. There are some things that you put more energy into them and it just doesn't pay you back and it's just not worth it. This is basically saying there are certain problems that show up in our lives and we just don't have an easy solution for it. So maybe you need work and you've applied for all the jobs that are available and you've called the people that you know might have some influence on getting you a job and you've had conversations with them and you're not getting a call. And maybe the time, there's still some open time for, for you know, something to, to come back your way. But instead of sort of just waiting, because you know that you've called, you know that you've done all those things, you keep calling. Anything yet, anything yet, anything yet. And then what that, what happens is these potential employers just say, okay, there is persistence. And then there's insistence that you get what you want. And it may be something that is not going to work to your advantage. So it's something where you're putting more energy into something, hoping it will be what you want it to be, but it's exactly opposite. It's the time to let go. And so if we look at life as being times of expansion and time of contraction, we are in with Mercury retrograde, especially a time of contraction. This is like a cycle where, you know, you, you can run a race, but you have to take a break. And this is where you're stepping back and saying, okay, universe, this is your, your time to do what you want to do. And I will be open to whatever shows up. It is, it's just believing and having faith as this, as this line is called that um, there is going to be something that will show up. And, and the nature of life is that change happens. We always have change, even whether we want it to happen or whether we don't want it to happen, change is part of our trajectory. So we know that things will change. The South Node in the Gate 18 line one is talking about this idea of, uh, once again, not quitting because you're frustrated. Instead, looking at how you can shift things up, looking at what you can actually do and sort of putting them in two piles. What can I do and what needs to be just left to the universe kind of showing up in my in my world? Because it is in the nodes, it is carrying on with a theme that we talked about for the last couple of months of, of some sort of improvement happening. Um, and again, because we don't have the gate 58 um, in play this time, like we did with the last uh, full moon, uh, the energy to actually fix it is not necessarily there. It doesn't mean it won't come. And if you have a hanging gate 58, you will already have the energy. But what it does say is that you might have more ideas of how you want to change something, but not necessarily a way to implement it yet. So be patient with your processes. Mercury in the gate 26 line four, and it's bringing this idea of prediction. It's kind of an interesting line, the fourth line of the gate 26, because it is tribal energy and it is related to abundance. And so we know that, it's bringing more emphasis to how you make your money type of thing. Um, so what it's basically saying is that uh, sometimes we need to, for lack of a better way to say it, this is kind of like putting on rose colored glasses, which kind of sounds like it's not a great thing. But when you look at the sales energy of the gate 26 and how many times, you know, if you have to go out and sell something, sell yourself, sell whatever. So for an instance, we go back to the job. You put an application out for 20 different places that that you, um, you know, want to work or whatever. And and you get a job and it's and it's one of the 20 and you don't have any other jobs that came your way. Well, you look at that one job means that out of those 20 different jobs, only one actually manifested into something that was tangible and that's kind of the nature of sales you can have you know so many different sales pitches so many different interactions with people so many ways of you're wanting to sell something but it doesn't mean that every time you want to sell something to somebody it's going to work out so there are times in your life and especially with this line where you just kind of have to censor it out or you have to say okay just because that happened then doesn't mean it's going to happen now. And so you sort of look at the world in a more positive way as opposed to 
um, thinking that whatever happened in the past, because the gate 26 is connected to the gate 44, is going to repeat itself. And yes, patterns do repeat themselves. But sometimes you have to sort of protect yourself because um, if you just think about all the times that it didn't work out, and you're out there trying to get a job or something like that, you're already sounding, you're already coming into the equation with a defeated kind of feeling of, oh my gosh, I've so many times I've not done well, or so many times, so, so many times I've not succeeded in what I wanted to do. And as soon as you bring that energy and it's bringing this cloud of, of negativity around you, when in, in fact, you can say, yeah, I, I, the world is open. Life can change. Every pattern doesn't have to repeat. Every pattern doesn't have to be a certain way. And things can come out of the blue when we least expect it. And this is kind of what this energy is bringing. And so that is another perspective where it's saying that, you know, instead of quitting, you could say, okay, maybe something different can happen. Maybe there's going to be something that shows up in my trajectory that I would never have expected because I don't know everything. If you look at the percentage of life that you actually know what's going to happen and you, you say, oh yeah, this is definitely going to happen. Um, and what, what actually plays out in the world because it's abstract energy or life process. Living in the world is abstract. It is not logical. There's no proven way that things are going to always work out. And so if you have expectations, again, Neptune in the gate 36, if you're expecting something to show up in a certain way, it's a good chance it won't show up the way you want to. And I think that that is the one thing that we're learning about with Neptune in the gate 36 is that, you know, being okay with life as it is, as opposed to how we want it to be. And this is kind of wrapping around that same kind of um, theme to say, just, you know, let go, try and look at, at, at life through uh, rose colored glasses if necessary, but at, at the very least, not sort of uh, sitting in negativity and thinking, um, and people would call this lack mentality as well, where you basically already uh, finished, you've already lost the race before you've ever begun. And that sort of will never work to your advantage. So instead of acting hastily, it is in your best interest to take your time with the decisions that you're going to make. And, and we also have Mars in the gate 31 line five. It's talking about, um, you know, listening to people and what they think you should do. And right now of all times, this is not necessarily the best time to listen to people and their advice, you know? And, and I think that if you look at advice that you get from people, you know, you listen to somebody and they, they sort of give you some information to give you advice and you say, yeah, that feels good. That feels right. Sometimes you'll get advice from somebody and, you know, it might be somebody you trust and it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel good. So this is saying that if it doesn't feel good, it may not be right. Even if it's somebody who you're trusting to help guide you forward, it may not necessarily be right. So again, pausing, looking at all the angles, what is true for you? Does it feel right for you? If it doesn't feel right for you, can you sit with it for a little while? It's okay to to take a pause. It is okay to have a moment of reflection and to sit with something and to do what feels correct for you as opposed to trying to align with somebody else's ideals or somebody else's, you could even say, flow. Um, even if it's a trusted individual, sometimes it's better just to sit with something instead of acting on somebody's intuition when basically your intuition might be screaming in a million ways to say, no, this is not necessarily what I want to do. If you add in that the gate 61 and also the gate 63 are activated for this transit, it could bring pressure. But again, this is fuel without awareness. So you might have pressure to know, which is uh, Venus in the gate 61, line three, and also pressure to have your doubts um, alleviated, have que have questions that you have in your mind answered. And so there's pressure to get the, the solutions to both from both of these energies. And, you know, it's easy to act spontaneously, but not necessarily in a way where it's going to serve you the best. In other words, taking your time to come to the decisions that you're going to make. And that is it for the new moon. I hope you have a wonderful new moon and I will be back again soon. Until next time, take care and bye for now.